Welcome to our lesson about dimensions. Let's start by creating a sketch on the top plane. Now I'm going to activate the circle tool. Let's place the center point. As you see, I've got the feedback that displays the radius of the circle. Now this is just a guide. It gives me the approximate size of my geometry. Right now the radius is about 30 millimeters. Remember, we're working in millimeters, grams, and seconds, and we see that in the status bar. When the radius is about 30 millimeters, I'm going to left click to place the circle. Let's go back to the status bar. Next to editing sketch one, I see a message that my sketch is currently underdefined. In other words, the sketch doesn't have enough relations and dimensions to prevent it from moving in two-dimensional space. Let me create a parallelogram next. Open up the rectangle tool and select the parallelogram subtool. I'm going to place my first point. Now the callout shows me the approximate distance and angle of my movements. My line is about 70 millimeters long at about a 30 degree angle. Let's place our second point. Now the callout gives the relative distance from the second point, but it gives me the absolute angle. Let's say I want the distance to be about 40 millimeters at approximately 90 degrees, and place my third point. Click the accept check mark to accept and close. And let's select and delete this geometry with a window selection. Let's create a corner rectangle now. Here's my first corner. The callout gives me the length and width of the rectangle. At some point, all four sides are going to be equal. In other words, I'll have a square. If I left click when those equal relation glyphs appear, SolidWorks will automatically place those equal relationships and thus define my square. And let's right click and select to close the tool. Now let's switch to the arc tool. I'm going to create a three-point arc. Here's my first point. The length is approximately 60 millimeters. The angle and radius values guide me now. Let's make the arc about 90 degrees. And let's create a center point arc now. The first click establishes the center. The callout shows the radius. Let's make the radius about 40 millimeters. My next click defines the length of the arc in degrees. The callout displays the current angular value. Let's make it about, let's say, 60 degrees. And let's click Escape to exit the tool. And let's window select and delete this geometry. Now let's place a rectangle. I'm going to activate the corner rectangle tool. And I'll drop it about here. Right click and select to close the tool. As I mentioned before, our sketch remains underdefined. We see a confirmation of this in the status bar. When I grab any corner of the rectangle, I'm able to move it freely. Once it's defined, I won't be able to. Currently, my sketch has only vertical and horizontal relations applied to it. In order to fix my geometry in space, I'm going to start with a shift select of these two points, the origin point and the left corner, and apply a coincident relation. Notice that two of my blue lines are now black. A black line indicates that your segments are at least partially constrained, restricted from movement. However, I can still grab and drag the corners where blue segments connect to the black segments. The left bottom corner of my rectangle, however, is fixed in space and it can't be moved. To further constrain my geometry, I'm going to apply some dimensions. Here we've got a number of different dimension subtools. But in this lesson, I'm going to focus on the Smart Dimension tool. The Smart Dimension icon appears next to the cursor. 
Let's click on the line I want to dimension. The second click drops the dimension. The Modify Dimension dialog window opens. And here we can enter a numerical value, for example, 60 millimeters. Click the traffic light symbol to regenerate the model. You can also adjust the value using this dial. And we can also use the arrows to increase or decrease in increments that we define. Click here to reverse the dimension and again to bring it back. Here's where we adjust the increment value. Currently it's 10 millimeters. Let's close this window. And let's see what happens when we reverse the dimension. Notice that I've got a minus sign in front of the numerical value. SolidWorks lets us use negative dimensions. The last icon in the Modify dialog window lets us import our dimensions into a drawing. And we're ready to accept. Let's click OK. Right click and select to exit the Dimension tool. If you don't see the Dimension dialog window we were just working in, go to Options, the General branch of the System Options tab, and ensure Input Dimension value is checked. Let's cancel out. Now as you can see, three lines of my rectangle are in black. One is still blue. I'm able to drag and drop the line that's blue. In order to fully define my geometry, I need to apply another dimension or relation. In addition to the blue and black line, as well as the note in the status bar, SolidWorks has another way of letting us know that an element is underdefined. Take a look at the node name in the Feature Manager design tree. There's a minus sign next to the name. This means that my sketch is underdefined. Let's activate the Smart Dimension tool again. I'll select this corner and this corner. Now drag and click to place my dimension. And let's make it about 50 millimeters. By the way, we don't have to click Regenerate or the traffic light symbol. I'm just going to go ahead and click Apply. Click the green check mark to exit the Dimension tool. And in the status bar, we see that the sketch is now fully defined. In the design tree, we see that the sketch is no longer preceded by the minus symbol, and all of our geometry is in black line in the graphic area. Next, let's try to add another dimension and see what happens. I'm going to select this line, and I'll drop the dimension here. Here's a prompt from SolidWorks. SolidWorks lets me know that I actually don't need this dimension. It'll make the sketch what's called overdefined. In other words, SolidWorks won't know which constraint to use when calculating the model. If I leave the dimension as driving, it'll be used to calculate the model. If I make it what's called a driven dimension, SolidWorks won't use it to calculate the model. A driven dimension gets its value from the surrounding geometry. Thus, it's merely a reference dimension. Let's make our new dimension a driven dimension and click OK to exit this dialog window. OK, let's right click and select to exit the dimension tool. Notice the new dimension that we just placed is in gray. Let me try to double click on it. SolidWorks tells me that it's a driven dimension and I can't change its value. Let's click OK. As you see in the property manager, the value box is also grayed out and can't be modified by us. OK, let's window select and delete this geometry. And now let's take a look at an example of when we'd need a driving dimension. Let me activate the Line tool and create a triangle. It'll be a right triangle. And let's activate the Dimension tool. I'm going to enter a value for this segment of 40 millimeters. This segment will be 30 millimeters. And let's exit the Dimension tool. Now, when I grab the triangle, I'm able to move it freely through 2D space. In order to fix the geometry in space, I'm going to select this point and apply a fix relation. OK. Now my geometry is black and fully defined. And the status bar also tells us that my sketch is fully defined. Let's add another dimension. Activate the Smart Dimension tool. And now let's select the hypotenuse of this triangle. Notice that as I mouse around, I toggle between horizontal, vertical, and align types of dimensions. 
In order to lock the dimension, just right-click when you get the one you want. Now we can move our mouse, but the aligned dimension is currently locked. To unlock a dimension type, right-click again. OK, let's right-click to use the aligned dimension so I can place the dimension for my hypotenuse. Left-click to place the dimension. Yes, let's make it driven. OK. Right-click and select to close the tool. Now let's say I need to change one of the values of the other segments. Let's say to 50 millimeters. I see how the length of the hypotenuse changes in real time. And let's click Accept. Now let's take a look at what happens when we use too many dimensions. Let's activate the Smart Dimension tool. Drop my dimension right here. And this time, let's leave this dimension driving. Click OK. SolidWorks lets us know that the sketch is overdefined. Let's double click on the overdefined message. The sketch expert opens. We've got two options for solving our problem. If we click Diagnose, SolidWorks will find the solutions for the sketch error. We can click Manual Repair to find the problems ourselves. Let's click Diagnose. SolidWorks results. It found five possible solutions. Click the arrows to cycle through the solutions. And click Accept if you want to choose one of the solutions. Or I can click Manual Repair. Let's try that out. Here I can select an item from the list. I'll select the dimension that defines the hypotenuse. And let's click Delete. SolidWorks lets us know that the sketch can now be resolved. Let's accept. Dimensions can also be moved. Let me left click and grab this square. And I can move it out here, for example. And after I'm done repositioning, I just right click and select to exit the dimension tool. Let me give you another example of why we might need to reposition a dimension. Let's drop a circle about here. Smart dimension. Let's select this point and the circle. SolidWorks gives me the dimension from the point to the center of the circle. Let's accept the default value. Now what I wanted was the distance from the point to the edge of the circle. I just simply grab and adjust. And let's exit. In order to fully define this sketch, I'm going to select this point and add a fix relation. And now my sketch is in black line and fully defined. Lastly, I'd like to show you how to dimension the length of an arc. Let's just create an arc here. Smart dimension, the first point of the arc. Second point. Now to define the length of the arc, I'm going to click on the arc itself. And here is the length of the arc. Let's left click to place that dimension. Accept the default value. The geometry does remain underdefined. Let's right click and select to close the dimension tool. Select this point. And control select the other point. And let's add a horizontal relation. Accept. Our sketch still remains underdefined. We need to add some more relations or dimensions, obviously. If you get in a situation where you're not sure what exactly is missing, just grab a point and try to move it to see what happens. Let's try it out. So here, as you can see, what happens is that the center of the arc moves freely. Let's click Undo to move the geometry back to its original position. To fully define this geometry, I can use a few different methods and a variety of relations. Which relations you prefer depends on your own working style and what you're going to be doing with the sketch later on. We've got two points that still move, the center of the arc, and the end of the arc. One option would be to simply add a fixed relation to either point. 
Let's click Undo. Another potential way to solve this problem would be by applying a radial dimension. Let's activate the Smart Dimension tool. And let's apply the radius dimension. We'll drop it about here. Accept the default value. Let's undo. Undo again. Activate the Smart Dimension tool. I can also dimension the distance between these two points. Left click to place. Accept the default value. Right click and select to exit the tool. And now our sketch appears in black line. The status bar shows us that the sketch is indeed fully defined. Let's exit our sketch, accepting our changes. And this concludes our tutorial about applying dimensions.